That's why I'm glad I'm not holding what you're holding. So we're having our first runner-up, and this is not the Miss Namibia, this is the first runner-up. Julita Kitwe Magula. Congratulations. Congratulations. Julita Kitwe Bangula. Our first run up. YouTube channel if you're new here thank you so much for clicking my name is Kiki and if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for clicking on this video yet again today I'm going to talk about something that has been the elephant in the room for the longest time I know that it has not gone unnoticed to you guys that I have actually been missing from YouTube for the past two years it's more than two years actually um, I took a sabbatical to some time away to reflect and I was just going through the most and that is exactly what we're going to be addressing in this video and the things that I've been up to since I last posted which was in 2019 it's a very long time ago it's 2021 now so I'm going to get into all the details as to what was happening during that time so keep this on watching was a very interesting year for me it was my final year of medical school I was finally almost done with um, six years of training and I was looking forward to just becoming an intern and actually earning a salary after like all the suffering I've ever been through. But I was also very stressed out about just life. I was very stressed out about, you know, being an intern next year and the responsibility of having to look after patients, the workload. I wasn't really sure where I wanted to do my internship. I wasn't sure if I was even good enough. I wasn't sure if um, my level of commitment to this medicine thing was an actual thing thing, if this is what I want to do, but I was like already about to graduate and about to finish. So at the very beginning of medical school, I had this entire vision of what I wanted to be and the kind of doctor that I wanted to be. And I felt as though in 2019, at the very beginning, it was not reflecting like I wanted it to. I was not like being the seven star doctor. <laughs> we're all promised at the end of the training that we're supposed to be. I remember being very stressed out about this and I thought, what am I going to do to stress myself out even more? I should do a pageant. I've been trying to get into Miss Namibia since 2017, I think. And at the time it was just something that I wanted to do because I've always been doing pageants since I was a little girl and I did a university pageant and I was like, oh my God, I should totally try out Miss Namibia and see how far I can go. So I've been trying since 2017, 2018, I got rejected. And then 2019, I actually got accepted. I was the happiest person on the planet because after you've been trying for so long to get something and you actually do, it's like a little mini victory, man. Like it's like, yes, I am worthy. And this is exactly what I need. So that win for me was like all the confirmation that I needed that, you know, I am that girl. The very first year I actually got rejected. I was like, ouch. And then the second year, which was 2018, I'd actually sent my images, um, on some online email thing which is not the way in which um the entry forms were supposed to be handed in it was supposed to be at the at the, the namibian office or something like that and i was not in vintuk at the time so they never actually got my um my application and then 2019 i was like way ahead of you i went to the namibian it, i remember i was in peds i went to the namibian after work in the afternoon and then I handed in my application, everything, all my pictures. And then they were like, no, they're doing things online now. So you need to hand it, you know, there's a certain email that you need to send to a website. And then you can hand your um, applications there. And I was like, oh, okay. 
quickly rushed home you know entered everything i sent it i think it was the day before the due date <laughs> procrastination like don't judge me okay so i ended up actually being you know selected to be part of the top 30 but while they were still looking for the top 30 whatever we had an interview right where they sort of um meet up with all the girls and they have a panel of judges where they ask you questions and you know and it depends of what it depends where you are in the country so they had interviews in vintu kondangwa as well as swakopmund i think i don't quite remember this is 28 19 it was a very long time ago i was very young then i'm not so young anymore okay my god look at all these girls that are here because you know you have a time slot in which you go into you know have the interview so I remember seeing girls coming with like suitcases and their bodies and the like their dresses and they're prepared and they have notes and I'm just sitting there like what am I doing with my life? Why am I here? I was doubting myself so much but I'd met Cyril that day and she is the person who has coached me throughout the years to do national and international pageants and you know I'm just so grateful for that opportunity to have met her. She's really like to me she is just everything i went in and i did my interview and i thought it was going to be you know something hectic but it was just a conversation i was having with a bunch of people and you know i walked away feeling weird i didn't know whether i actually made it or i didn't so i was just like okay fingers crossed they call me back and i'm in the top you know top 30. I waited a couple of days and I remember getting a phone call saying that I actually made it and I was like over the moon and ecstatic and just so excited. We then had a preliminary pageant where they chose the top 10 if I'm not mistaken and I managed to get a spot. I was like, okay, this, you guys see me, you know, see me doing all these things, yeah, yes. Meanwhile, I'm still in medical school i'm still in my final year i'm still trying to like pass modules and pass tests and you know go to the hospital and see patients and clerk patients and you know go to clinics and things like that so i was basically juggling two lifestyles at the same time and i generally didn't have a problem with that because i knew what i was getting myself into it was just that at some point it became a lot 2019 like right at the very like middle of everything before the top 10 was actually even announced i had gone to my hod for another department that i was going into so even in medical school we do rotations so i think we used to do four month rotations two month rotations um, between majors so at that time when I first started doing the Miss Namibia thing I was in psychiatry which is really really chill but very very like they're very strict but the good thing is that everybody in all the medical offices in the department were very supportive so I was just like yay I was now moving on to another um, department and um this department is also as hectic but i mean it's not that deep like it's not like the patients are waiting on me to make decisions like i'm not the consultant but it was very very serious department whatever so i thought i'm going to be a good student i'm going to talk to my hod and you know she's a lady she'll understand that i you know just need a week off i just need one week off so that I can do this Miss Namibia thing because if I'm selected to be in the top 10, we have a media week. And that's the week where we do all our shoots and, you know, our intro videos that are going to be used on TV, everything, media week. So I was asking her, can I have that week? And then I'm going to need another week where I'm going to be at the hotel. I'm not allowed to have visitors. I'm not allowed to leave. I'm not allowed to go to work and then come back so i was asking her for that kind of leniency out of four months out of two months sorry i sat down with her and i was like okay um the thing is i have this thing that i'm doing i'm doing miss namibia this year and i was just wondering if i could get like a week off 
so that I can do this like thing if I'm selected to be in the top 10 because at that point we're not selected yet so if I am selected can I do it and she was just like <laughs> what <laughs> like I was just like oh my god she was she was I, oof. I was so convinced that this lady hates me she was like no what do you mean you're doing Miss Namibia Miss Namibia is not for people that are doctors Miss Namibia is for girls that are studying business management, things like that. Tell me one successful Miss Namibia winner that you know of. And I was like, <laughs> like, babes, <laughs> who hurt you? And, you know, she went on an entire rant that like, no, um, in this department, you know, we've had students who's, siblings have passed on and they took time off but they still had to come back and repeat the rotation so never mind you who's going to take time off an entire week off of two months to go and model what is that so you have a lot of things to think about before you come to me and you tell me that you want to do this miss namibia thing i was shook i mean i understood her to a certain extent how important and you know this is medicine this isn't like you know, you are actually committed to become a doctor. You're in your final year. How dare you want to do, you know, other things on the side. I was so devastated. I remember crying in her office and she was just like, yeah, I know, like, you can have a tissue, okay? And um, you can just go home and think about everything. I thought to myself, like, what am I going to do? I absolutely have to do this Miss Namibia thing. But if I do it, that means that they're going to fail me. So... I need to get a game plan and I need to look for loopholes. So I sat down with my friend, Tashinga, <laughs> and I'm exposing him because <laughs> he's the one who came up with this idea. I went to him and I was like, look, this is my problem. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I really want to do this Miss Namibia thing. Help. And he's like, look, ne, if you're going to do this pageant thing, you better just commit to the pageant thing and like leave medicine alone because if they find out that you're halfway in medicine and halfway in doing pageantry, they're not going to like that idea. They're going to think that you're not serious. So then I thought of a plan. The rotation that um, I was supposed to go to, of which the HOD I spoke to and she was just like hating on me, gang gang. I'm not going to go to that rotation, although I'm assigned there. I'm going to go to another rotation so i'm going to be in the air this rotation is not going to expect me because when they are going to be asked the number of in of students that are going there i'm not going to be included in this list i was never placed in that other rotation so they they're not going to know that there's an added student in the other rotation so my plan was this <laughs> please don't try this at home this is actually 100 percent not advisable i decided to choose my group members in the other rotation i decided to get um people that i'm close to that i can call and be like yo look i'm not going to be around for this amount of time so you know a rotation is two months right so it's four weeks four weeks eight weeks in total so the rotation that i was planning to go to um you'd rotate four weeks in one hospital in a certain ward and then the other four weeks you rotate in another hospital in this a different kind of ward so the wards are the same but the um, consultants are different so i decided to you know do that so i went to um the group leader spoke to them told them about my entire plan i spoke to my group mates you know my friends i'm like guys please don't even mention my names around these medical offices don't mention my name in morning meetings don't say a single thing about me being here but like you're seeing me on the news or you're seeing me on tv don't you don't know me okay so when i did that you know my friends were on board and they were all just like okay no it's fine like you know we're gonna help you out with this particular thing like we got you. The only other issue was that I was not going to go to that rotation and then be there for the week and then go missing for another week and not have a sick leave and then come back. I was just going to like not show up at all for the first four weeks of the rotation. So I basically dropped out of medical school. 
for like a month so during this entire month i was doing this namibia things you know going on trips and you know doing my media week you know the pageant happened rehearsals we had to stay at the hotel for like an entire week and just rehearsing and everything so that's what I, uh, that's what i was doing and then in the meantime i was also just like you know reading and you know going through everything i remember very well like being so concerned about my academics and when i come back after four weeks what if they notice that there's a new student in the department but you know it's a different hospital like no one even really has time to check out students like that like no one has time for that i just decided that when i do come back for the next four weeks in the department i'm going to work extra hard and I'm going to a, uh, a ward where they're actually doing a lot of teaching and I can catch up with everybody else. And besides, we've been doing, you know, this rotation ever since second year. So it's not, it's not, it's nothing new. It's just the responsibility of, you know, going on call and making decisions and just being more like an intern. Miss Namibia is actually quite demanding. They require so much of your time. So if you're a working individual, then you definitely have to like sit down with your boss and be like, <laughs> I'm going to do this thing on the side. Can I? Because I might not pay you. And if you're a student, it takes time out of you, like your student life. And most of the people that, you know, are allowed to enter over the age of 18. So we obviously have like a life and other things that we're doing apart from the pageant. So. I remember this one time I felt so demotivated during the pageant and I just kept telling myself that I'm risking so much that I cannot walk away empty handed. I could not walk away with absolutely nothing because if the people at the hospital find out that I've actually not been going to the hospital, that for four weeks I've just been hiding in my room, then I am done for it. That means like... I'll have to come back the very next year and redo that rotation and then, you know, delay graduating, delay starting internship, delay everything would have just like gone down. But I think I was really okay with it because after you, you graduate, you are like down for six months, not doing anything. So I felt comfortable doing Miss Namibia. So in case I win or there are other responsibilities in which I have to do, I have, you know, six months to do that before I actually like get an actual job and I'm an intern so i really went hard i tried my best but i was definitely holding back a lot because i was like i don't want to win win like walk away with the title no i don't want to do that i just want to like you know make it <laughs> it's not be there <laughs> i don't want to actually win because that means that like i have to be down for a year and as much as i was comfortable with the idea and the consequences of that i was also just like to like just do medicine again yo uh -uh. i don't think that's something that i want to do so winning wasn't um something that i actually wanted to do and i realized the more that i do pageants i guess it comes with the fact that my job is very demanding that i don't really want to win unless it is something that will dramatically change my life like if i am going to you know be comfortable then i absolutely don't mind but if i you know still have to struggle or like i get a car but i must take it back the night came and you know we modeled and we did our best and i placed as the first runner up in 2019 for miss namibia and i was super ecstatic about that because i was like i kind of made it but like i don't have any actual responsibilities as miss namibia so I just, oh, yes yes this is exactly what i wanted i was really content and i was happy with my placement i was very very happy with it because that meant that i could go back to school and finish my degree and then you know pursue other things in life so after the pageant i think i still had um two weeks to go of my four weeks of dropping out there were times where we had to travel out to you know the different regions and do some projects for miss namibia which is really really fun and exciting but um, other than that, I just really stayed and tried to catch up on the on the work that I had actually missed out on. My four weeks had lapsed. It was time for me to go back to the hospital, right? And we were all moving as a group to another hospital. 
but in a different ward as well under a different you know consultant um they had no idea who i was and i was like yes but when i started you know in the department you know we went the day before we're actually supposed to start and we saw all the patients we clocked all the patients we read up on all the conditions and we were ready i didn't want to raise any suspicions of as to you know why where have i been or why am i lagging behind so i set up with my friends you know we went through everything we did everything together i'm just really grateful for my group of friends that i was with because they really covered for me <laughs> i think i could easily talk about it now since it's like in the past so they really did help me out and even when i got back it wasn't even a struggle you know it's just same see patients clerk them know what's going on you know complications yada yada we had to write this end of rotation exam of which you write at the end of each rotation to see how competent you are you know when you're doing um a rotation and i did very well i got a distinction in that one and i was just like i'm kind of smart sometimes the lady hod that i had spoken to earlier um who was just really like hating on me at that point um when i now just joined the other rotation she was a foreigner sort of and a contract with like the university and the hospital whatever it ended so she ended up like going back to her country and like i was like oh my god it's such a shame uh i just i can't believe it but i was also like secretly celebrating because i was not about to have her come and you know tell all her fellow consultants what i was doing you know and what i was asking for a week Whew, ridiculous the whole situation kind of like it worked out very well for me because um things could have gone left really quickly but you know i've been praying so i finished my rotation and then i moved on to the next rotation i wrote my exams i passed my exams and i graduated in 2020 and that was the year that covid was just like <laughs> I'm about to do the most. We had a online graduation, which was like the weakest graduation I've ever seen in my whole life. I didn't even know what it was all about. And you know, when, when COVID first hit, we were just like, okay, so yeah, it's a pandemic though, but like graduation, are we still doing it? Are we not? Like we cannot not graduate. We have to take an oath. I think I was getting depressed because you know we're not having a graduation there's this pandemic that's going on i was gaining weight <laughs> i got fat and fat for other people it's like it's a different definition but for me i've never weighed over 55 kilograms in my whole life ever during the pandemic at the very beginning i was weighing 65 kilograms and i just i felt I felt really big and you know it didn't help that everybody we know was making comments like oh you're a model but you know you're so fat eh. and i'm just like that is okay i'm not going to fight you today but i will fight you one day just not today so that period of the beginning of 2020 was very very difficult for me um i was happy that i'd actually finished medical school but i was also i think battling you know body image issues and just gaining weight and having to deal with the fact that you know i'm transforming i'm becoming a woman now i'm no longer a kid um yeah and you know we didn't have our graduation and it just things just didn't play out the way that i wanted them to and i was in a very dark space so that actually didn't stop until um i started working so i finally got a job i got placed exactly where i wanted to be because i wanted to be closer to home so i started working and i started feeling a little bit better about myself because i was not just lazing around the house you know feeling broke <laughs> i'd actually had something that i was doing with my life so and i was actually using my degree so i was very very grateful for that so i thought what better way to distress myself then do another pageant i don't know what i was thinking so i decided to 
sign up for Miss Africa. It's a pageant that's hap that was happening in Nigeria. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. To be honest, I don't know if I'm even in the right mind to be speaking about this pageant. Miss Africa was... It, um, hmm. <laughs> Miss Africa was a pageant that I've been looking forward to do since 2019. You know, every time I'm about to do a pageant, I obviously have to do some research and, you know, find out more about the pageant and then see, you know, what the motives are, the girls that went to represent the country before, um, what would happen, I would reach out to them and really just find out, you know, more information about the pageant. So I did that with Miss Africa and it seemed like it was a very legit pageant. It seemed that it was well organized. It seems like, you know, it's it was a great opportunity for me to, you know, just grow in this pageant industry and also just for me to discover myself and, you know, it was an opportunity to go to West Africa, like on the other side of Africa. And there was an entire vigorous process, uh, but at the, end of, at the end of the day, I ended up representing Namibia for Miss Africa. I think I just want to end it at that. <laughs> Because the events that happened thereafter are things that I'm still trying to figure out. I'm still trying to understand. And there's a lot of pending issues that, you know, even as a top three winner, I'm, you know, still questioning. I'm still trying to recover from the traumas of, like, what happened. But I think I'm doing, like, one year later, I'm doing um, much better. Every experience has its lessons. And from Miss Africa, I think I learned to be resilient <laughs> and be strong. <laughs> I think it was a character building situation. I think I really walked away knowing the kind of person that I am and the things that I will tolerate in life. And things that I will absolutely not tolerate and I will not um, allow to happen. So, you know, every experience, you know, teaches you something about yourself, teaches you something about people, about, you know, places, about the inner workings of the country or the people there. So I think for me, Miss Africa was definitely about that. So I ended up scooping the prize of second runner up so that was also you know that was pretty cool because yet again i did have the responsibility of you know being the actual queen and signing contracts and doing all that extra stuff pageantry is definitely something that i enjoy doing and i will continue to enjoy doing it's not just a hobby for me it's definitely has taught me so much about myself and and I feel in a certain way has groomed me into the kind of woman that I want to be. So it's through those platforms that I'm able to find my voice and I'm able to speak up on things that I think are correct or not, to find what my purpose is and what I'm actually even passionate about. So that is what I've been doing the past couple of years. I've just been waiting to, you know, be stable because I was going through a lot of ups and downs in my life. And I wanted to get to a point where I'm, you know, comfortable enough to have conversations about this. So as a young junior doctor in Africa, you know, not you're not going to get so many opportunities to do anything. <laughs> you have to create these opportunities by yourself. You need to go out there and find things to do with your life. I understand that the fraternity of medicine expects you to be committed to it. You have to center your life around books and academics and patients and hospital and procedures and, 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 and that's very important. It's, it really is, but I'm in my early twenties. I'm not going to spend my youth just doing that exclusively. I'm definitely going to go out there and look for opportunities for myself and do things that make me happy and try to travel the world. And, you know, time is definitely not on my side. <laughs> Or anybody's side for that matter and I'm not encouraging it 
I'm not. I'm just saying, like, live your best life. Just do the things that make you happy. So I'm going to leave it at that. I want to hear from you guys. What have you been doing the past two years since I've been on YouTube? Have you achieved anything? Have you been trying to achieve anything? Have you gotten a new job? Did you transition from being a student to an actual working citizen of your country? <laughs> Whatever it is that you are trying to do, I think um, moving forward is just, you know, what we're all trying to do one step at a time. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Remember to like, subscribe, share. Also, there's a notification bell somewhere in like this channel. So just hit it so you get notified every time I upload something. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.